Is this gonna work? Oh! Ooh! It's on auto. Let me turn it to manual. Uh, I'm gonna start the video. I'm like trying to set this up. I don't want you guys to be staring down my tits the whole video, but I want you to be able to see my face too. Okay, you guys are sitting on a tub of protein. I'm. No? Am I tall enough now? No! Hmm. Hmm. I need like something to sit on. I'll sit on the pillow. Let's see. Am I tall enough now? Yeah, that should work. Okay. Let me get comfy here. So. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh. I already. This is just gonna be. I'm sorry. Okay. So. This is why you're here. Um. Let me, let me compose myself. Okay, this is why, this is why you're here, because of these. Um, hi, my name is Kayla. I just turned 20, um, January 2nd. Actually, this is, that's probably, I don't need, you don't need to know that, but, um, I'm 20. I had a breast augmentation when I was 19 on October 21st. I don't know why I'm nervous because, okay, so I figured I would make this video, I am almost three months post-op, and I figured I would make this video sooner rather than later, so I have all the details, like, fresh in my memory, and I don't forget anything or leave anything out, or, like, I don't want to get blurry in my memory, but it is, like, 1 a.m. I worked, like, 3 to 11, and so I'm just, like, overtired, but, like, I'm just, like, I need to make this video right now. So I put on my favorite bra, which is the Victoria's Secret bombshell bra. And <laughs> I put on my favorite shirt, which is the Lululemon long sleeve sunset salutation tee. And I decided to pull out my camera and I played around with a bunch of different <laughs> positions. I tried to set you guys up in my bathroom, um, but now you guys are balancing on some protein on my phone. And I wanted to record with my nice camera because the quality is just a lot nicer than with like um, my webcam or my phone. Okay, so the, everything you need to know about a breast augmentation in like two and a half minutes into the video, let me start. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go back and start all over. Sorry, I'm all over the place. But I had a breast augmentation October 21st when I was 19. So, okay, I, I started thinking about this I kind of have always thought about it since I was little, but it's always been something like I'll never be able to afford it, I could never go through with that, everyone would judge me, I, that's never going to end up happening, I've always just kind of, and then a lot of it was like, oh, but a lot of girls, their boobs look so fake and gross, and I don't want mine to look fake and gross, and I just, it always was like something I wanted, but something I knew I could never have when I was younger, because I've always been pretty flat chested, um, I just have really, I am pretty small, I'm like a petite, I'm short and I'm thin. I've always had smaller boobs because of that. Um, I've always been athletic too, which didn't really help in that department either. Um, so I've just always grown up kind of envying girls. I always was jealous when girls would wear a shirt, like a low cut shirt like what I'm wearing now and they have the cleavage that I have right now. That was always something I was always so jealous of because I had never been able to have that. I was. 18, um, oh no, well, I kind of started more seriously thinking about it when I was 18, but I felt like I had the body of like an 11 year old, even though I was fully developed and I just, I honestly just felt so self-conscious. I felt like a child. That was pretty much one of the main reasons I wanted a breast augmentation. I wanted it for me. No one had pressured me into this. Um, no one had even commented on like negatively about my small boobs. It was always me. Like, my boyfriend never said anything bad about the size of my boobs before. Um, it was always just me kind of tearing myself down, and I've come a long way with my self-image, and I this was, like, the last thing I felt I needed to finally feel at peace with my body. I pretty much had accepted everything else. There was nothing else I really hated, but I would think about this. 
on a daily basis and I would be self-conscious about this on a daily basis. I would always wear like baggy shirts and I would never wear anything tight or low cut because I was always just so self-conscious about being a 32A. Not that there's anything wrong with a 32A, it was just something I didn't feel comfortable in my own body. I wanted to feel comfortable. I wanted, I didn't have low self-esteem at all. I just, it was one little thing, a minor thing that I did not like about myself that I had the resources to fix. Um, and I know it's considered selfish and I don't know, like what vain or I don't even know what you want to call it, getting a breast augmentation or getting any form of plastic surgery. But if you have the resources to do something about something that makes you uncomfortable on a daily basis and no one's pressuring you into doing anything about it, um, I more power to you to make the change and to go through with it. But I started thinking very seriously about it over the summer of 2015. That's when I started researching doctors. Um, I ended up finding my doctor on realself.com, which is where I suggest everyone go. I typed in, I wanted to be within 45 minutes of my area because I did not want to have to travel after surgery. There were three main doctors in my area. Um, I guess I'm just going to end up saying this because I was going to, not sure if I want to say who my surgeon was, but I have no issue saying who my surgeon was. I live in the Western New York area. Um, I don't really want to talk badly of the other surgeons, but um, my, okay, so I went on realself.com. There were three surgeons in the area. One I just didn't like off the bat. There was another one who I liked, and then there was one who I loved, and so there was like one I just discarded. There was one I liked and one who I loved, and like the one who I loved, he worked in like the rich area of where I live, and like I could just tell from the website he was going to be the highest price of a breast augmentation in my area. And then there was a guy I liked, and I liked his results, but um, I just knew he'd be a lot cheaper. So I'm, this is not something where you want to cut costs with, by the way, this surgery. But he was cheaper, so what I did was I called him, I made a, con I made a consultation appointment with him, um, and then I hung up and I just felt so bad about it. Like I called the guy who I liked, not the guy who I loved, like the surgeon who I liked because I knew he would be a lot, like several thousand dollars cheaper. I called him, I made a consultation appointment. The whole like day, I just felt so bad and like, so like, this is not what I should be doing. I called him back up the next day, canceled my consultation appointment. And I made an appointment with the surgeon who I initially fell in love with, the one who I wanted from the beginning, but I was worried he'd be too expensive for me because this is something that I've wanted for so long that I was going to get the guy who I wanted the most. And I ended up making a consultation appointment. It was $95. My consultation appointment was, was October 1st. It was about a week wait from when I called. So I started this process at the end of September. I called him like September 25th maybe, and my appointment was October 1st. I showed up at the appointment um, and he just asked me a lot of questions about my health because to see if I was even eligible for the surgery, why I wanted it. Um, he showed me pictures of his patients. He's been doing breast augmentations for over 20 years. He has hundreds of before and after pictures he let me look through. He talked about the difference between saline and silicone, which I'll go into more. Um, he just basically talked about what the surgery was, what to expect the costs, um, everything about it. I just felt such a connection with this surgeon and I just loved him so much. And I just, all I didn't see a single before and after that I wouldn't have wanted on myself, if that makes any sense. I loved every, all the surgeries um, that I was looking at. Sorry, like I'm just like in kind of emotional and this is kind of like, I've never talked about this. So this is kind of hard for me to talk about, but I'm trying. So. The consultation appointment, he, like I said, he told me the difference between saline and silicone and what to expect from the surgery, um, just everything about the surgery and what my options were. Um, and the consultation appointment was $95, but if you ended up going with the surgery, he takes the $95 off of your total bill. So like it technically is free included in the surgery if you end up booking with him, but if you don't, then it's $95. So I, I just, I didn't even have that many questions because the whole like month before this, I was spending like six to eight hours a day, literally ask my boyfriend. That is all I did for the month of September was Google 
every in and out of breast augmentation surgery there's just there's just breast implants.com and there's a forum I went through like every forum page um i just was i didn't have any questions because i had just that was googling breast augmentations was literally my full-time job for the month before i went to this consultation so i didn't really have any like straight off the bat questions i hadn't already googled for hours myself so i ended up feeling so comfortable with the surgeon and so sure that i did want to go through with this just from what my gut was telling me that i booked my surgery the day of my consultation my consultation was October 1st. I booked my surgery for October 21st. So between then and my pre-op appointment, I had to do two things. Um, by the way, insurance isn't going to cover anything. So I had to get a physical. It was a um, surgical clearance physical. So I had to call someone who worked with my surgeon who would clear me and that appointment was $125 they I came in they just did like vision weight height like they did an EKG and just asked me a lot of questions about my history just they wanted to make sure I was healthy enough to go undergo surgery pretty much that appointment was 125 insurance didn't cover that then I had to get blood work done and that was $55 I had to get a couple things checked just to make sure I was again healthy enough for surgery so I had my consultation appointment, I had to get blood work done, and then I had to get a surgical medical clearance physical. Um, I did those things, and then I, have my, then I had my pre-op appointment. Um, and then my, at my pre-op appointment, I paid for the entire surgery, and your surgery is going to end up being anywhere, if in most cases, between five and $10,000. I don't really want to say exactly what I spent. That honestly still makes me a little uncomfortable, but I did spend in the middle between the five and ten thousand dollars. We'll just say that. How about? Um, my camera's blinking at me. I don't really know what that means. I don't. Okay, this has been a long. Okay, so I'm sorry for dragging this out. But so after I had those, I'm just trying. <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, after I had my consultation, my blood work, and my physical, then my pre-op appointment came. During the pre-op appointment, um, I went into the room. The doctor had me take off my shirt. Oh, I had to do this in the consult. No, yes. See, I'm already like blurry. I'm pretty sure he did this twice. This is the second time he did this, but I took off my shirt. Um, he measured from like my neck to my nipple and my neck to my other nipple, and he measured some, um, thing he like just he measured a lot of angles and stuff and he told me the max I could go is 290 cc's which is nothing let me tell you like 290 cc's most girls end up with like 400 cc's and that's like fine but I am so short I have such a small rib cage and I am just so small that he even told like very unheard of to go under 300 cc's but he told me my max was 290 cc's so on the pre-op day, the pre-op day is when you decide how many cc's you want because he has to order them for the surgery. So I was debating between 270 cc's and 290 cc's and I ended up like because you can what they do is they give you a surgical bra and in the surgical bra you can put the implants in and you can take them out and like you can see what it feels like to have each kind and it just felt so weird just remembering for the first time putting on the surgical bra and just having implants in there and feeling like you actually had boobs for the first time. And I was just so overwhelmed. Like, I remember putting in the 290 cc's, which was the most you could do. He, most he would do on me because he said anything over 290 cc's on my frame would not, would put me, like, health risks. Like, that they could get, um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, actually. But 290, 290 cc's was my max. I was debating anywhere between 240 cc's and 290 cc's. I tried on the 270 and the 290, and I remember the 290 felt like, I just, I remember trying it on and I'm like, oh my gosh, these are huge. Like, I can, that's not going to be practical. So I told him, I'm like, I don't think I can do the 290 cc's. I don't want to look like... Like, I don't want to look weird. Like, I don't want to be this tiny girl with these huge tits. And then I remember debating. I ended up not knowing what I was going to get because 
I was telling him, I was like, I don't know if I want the 270 or if I want the 290. I mean, I don't know how I'm going to feel once they're in because it's obviously a little different when you have like a ball on in your surgical bra than when you actually have them. So I told the surgeon, I'm like, you have done this for 20 years. You've heard your feedback from your clients. You have perform the surgery on people of my size, I want you to use your judgment and tell me if I should, and I want you to pick the 290 or the 270. I left my size up to my surgeon because I couldn't decide and I didn't want to have any regrets and I thought he had better judgment. He ended up going with the 290 cc though. But in the pre-op appointment, I paid my balance. You have to pay for the whole surgery up front. They usually don't offer financing, and I definitely would not suggest taking out a loan with interest to have a cosmetic surgery because you're going to be ending up paying thout, like so much more than you would have paid if you just saved your money for it. And I had been saving my money since I was 12. I paid for the surgery 100% myself. I didn't have any help from my boyfriend. I did not have any help from my parents, which is another common question um, that people on Tumblr have asked me if my parents paid for it. No, I wish. <laughs> um, this has actually been my biggest purchase. These were more than my car. <laughs> I had been saving for it since I was little. I actually had been saving money and my thought was I was gonna go on a really nice vacation one spring break in college and that never ended up happening and this is just what I wanted to use the money I had saved for. I had been working since so I was 16 and I'm still working. Um, okay, so I'm losing track and then, okay, so then there was a pre-op appointment. I'm, <laughs> where am I? I'm at the pre-op appointment. He just basically went over everything again, answered any last minute questions. We figured, he figured out the size he wanted to order for me. I paid it. The, so the pre-op appointment is him telling you what you need to do for the day of the surgery, what you need to do after the surgery. Like he gives you a surgery checklist. Um, I got a post surgery checklist. So everything I need to do the day before and everything I need to do after. He gave me my script for my painkillers, my anti-nausea meds and my antibiotics, which I had to get filled. Um, there's just so much information. I'm sorry, this is, I'm not, I should have planned this out a little bit better, but. So yeah, the pre-op appointment was just like finalized and everything. You pay for it, you figure out what size he's gonna order, um, you, he answers any last minute questions. They take before pictures, by the way. Um, I have a before and after, like a nude before and after that they did, which is really cool. And it's just kind of like a finalization of everything. And then you leave, um, and then I went, then I had my surgery day, which was October 21st. So there was 20 days between my consultation appointment and the surgery itself. I had my surgery on a Wednesday and I only missed Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of school. And then I was back on Monday. So I missed three days of school and that's all I missed. My surgery was at 11 AM on Wednesday, the 21st. It was about a half hour away. I had to get there at 9 AM. I got there at 9 AM. Oh wait, let me, before I even say this, um, before I even talk about the day of the surgery, I ended up going with 290 cc's saline implants and under the muscle. And when I say I have saline implants, that actually has surprised people because I have been told they look really natural and apparently saline has a stereotype of looking really fake. And saline implants, um, if they were to ever burst, it's salt water and your body can absorb it and there's no health risks. Um, gel implants have not been around as long. They have not been FDA approved for anyone under 22. You still can get them if you're under 22, but you just have to sign a waiver. I just, to be honest, when I was looking at before and afters, a lot of the time I couldn't tell the difference between saline and silicone. When I felt them in person, I liked the way the saline felt. I've heard a lot of people say it feels like water. My tits don't feel like water to me. They feel like very squishy. <laughs> they don't, they just, they like, they're very squishy. They're not, they don't feel like a water balloon at all. They feel pretty real. Um, <laughs> to me anyway, I don't think they feel like fake at all. Um, I don't really know. I don't really think they look fake. Um, I mean, that's what they look like from like the side. And this is obviously a bombshell bra. So, I mean, they are a little bit exaggerated in this bra, but I don't think they look fake. I mean, obviously, maybe a little bit, but, like, I don't think they look as fake as a lot of people the stereotype was. So, I went with saline, and I went with under the muscle 
because it looks more natural you have a better recovery time and for insertions okay so you can either get saline or silicone silicone is a little bit more expensive and but it's if you were to ever burst you could go into toxic shock you can have a lot of issues um, the only reason I think a lot of people go with it is because it feels more natural and looks more natural, but I didn't have an issue with saline. I, honest, I wouldn't change what I did at all. I'm very happy with my saline implants. So there's just a lot of health risks associated that, that I didn't want to undergo. And breast augmentation is actually considered a minor surgery, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. Um, cause a lot of people are like, you're going under, un you're going under the knife unnecessarily. It's the complications are that of like wisdom teeth. That's what my surgeon told me, and I Googled it, and that would seem to be true. Okay, so I went with saline implants, 290 cc's, and cc's are, oh God, is it, I think it's cubic, cubic centimeters? I'm not really sure, but he said like 20 cc's is like a teaspoon, so like 290 cc's, and I went from a 32A to a 32D, and I went with an under-the-muscle insertion, and um, you can either go through the armpit, in the nipple or under the muscle and I wish I want to show you guys my scar but I don't know if I can do that without showing you my boob so you can kind of you can still kind of see my scar maybe hold on let me make I just want to show you my boob <laughs> okay so here I just don't want to show you my boob this is my scar um, three months later. It still is pretty kind of noticeable, but that's about what it is right now. Um, you can't see it like when I'm wearing a bra, the scar is where like the little, the scar is like where the end of the bra comes. It's like, the scar is like right here. So you can't see the scar in like a bikini or a bra or anything. Um, under the armpit, just in the armpit is like the least, I don't know. I just, it doesn't have the best results and the nipple just kind of weirded me out and so I went with the insertion right there and I went with like I said under the you can either have the implant over the muscle or under the muscle and it's always advised to do under the muscle if you have enough breast tissue which I did so even though I had small boobs I had enough breast tissue to do under the muscle it's okay so that is when I went with my surgery I used Dr. Andrew Giacobbe in Williamsville, Hamburg, New York. He has two offices. And so Andrew Giacobbe, G-I-A-C-O-B-B-E. -E. And so the day of the surgery, before the surgery, I had to pick up my meds. I actually got a script for Valium and an anti-nausea script for the Valium. I didn't fill my Valium script. I only used anti-strength, I mean anti-strength, extra strength Tylenol. I did get the antibiotic filled though because that was like, I did not want to get an infection. So I go to the surgery, I show up the night before, you, you couldn't shower the day of, and you couldn't have eaten anything after midnight the night before. So I showed up, fasted, not having showered, in comfy clothes. I actually wore these sweatpants on the day of my surgery because <laughs> he just wanted to wear comfy clothes. So I get there two hours early, my boyfriend lovely boyfriend took off the whole week of work for me to take care of me so I showed up and um it was honestly we were in the waiting room like an hour and a half and I was just like I want my boobs like in the waiting room so then um finally I got called in um it was a long process oh my gosh I can't okay so I only have a couple minutes left. I'm gonna try to hurry this up but so I got an IV they couldn't, because I had not drink in water, you couldn't have had water, gum, coffee, anything. You could not have had anything to eat or drink for at least 12 hours. They couldn't find any veins in me. It took three nurses to get the IV into me. And normally you're supposed to put the IV in your hand, but they had to put it in my arm because they could not get a vein in my hand. It took three nurses to do it. So they put the IV in me, which was like, they had a salt water solution in the IV just going into me. And I changed into my gown. Um, the surgeon came and met me. He was like, we're going to be going through this soon. Like, good luck. Like, you just came and met me before the surgery. Um, I was just in my little hospital bed for like another half hour waiting for the anesthesiologist. Um, by the way, you have your insurance won't cover anesthesia or the hospital fee. My anesthesia was, I think, $980. And my hospital fee was like $2,300. So, because those are two separate fees on top of the surgery you have to consider. And then, 
Oh, and you also have to consider the fees for like your antibiotics, your Valium, your um, anti-nausea if you choose to go with those. So the IV, I just remember them, once the anesthesiologist came in, he was like, you're going to feel, if you've ever been really drunk, you're about to feel really drunk and then you're going to fall asleep. They did the anesthesia through an IV. The surgery took about an hour and a half. I woke up in recovery. They made me wait 30 minutes. Um, I ended up going home. I just was on. They gave me pain meds at the hospital. So the whole first night, I didn't feel anything. The next day, I woke up so sore. Um, I could, oh, when I went home from surgery, they cut me in bandages and then a surgical bra. And then um, I got home. The next morning, I had my pre-op, my post-op appointment, I'm sorry. So I had the surgery the 21st. The 22nd was my first post-op appointment at 9 a.m. So at 9 a.m. the next day, the surgeon wanted to see me. He came and took off the bandages. And then um, I still couldn't shower. Like, I just felt disgusting. Took off the bandages. He looked at everything. He told me everything was feeling okay. And he told me to start massaging my breasts for two to three times a day for about a minute on each one just to help like stuff soften because when you get breast implants they're very high up and they're very hard like and they're very swollen so they looked a lot bigger than what they actually would end up dropping down and softening up to so that was my first post-op appointment he said everything was good he just kind of looked around and made sure everything was okay asked me had any questions um, then for you have to wear a sports bra 24-7 for six weeks after your surgery. You cannot wear any underwire because your scar, your incision is healing. So um, I didn't get my Valium filled. Like I said, I didn't want to... I've just read so many... I've watched too much intervention where people have actual pain and actual need for like Valium and then get hooked on it. And I'm just like... I, I'm not going to get a breast augmentation ends up being I have a Valium addiction. Like, I have no substance abuse issues, but, like, I just watch too much intervention, to be honest. So, I took extra strength Tylenol. I remember I slept 18 hours the first couple days. I just laid in bed all day. Finally, by Friday, so two days after my surgery, I could shower. And Friday, we actually, um, my boyfriend took me out to dinner. So, two days, or... All day Wednesday and all day Thursday, slept in my bed, didn't do anything. Jake was my nurse. Jake's my boyfriend. He was my nurse all day. Friday I, at night, I finally felt okay to walk around a little bit. But, like, getting up in the morning to, like, pull your body weight up hurt so bad. And I just took two Tylenol every four hours or whatever the max you could take. I was just on <laughs> Tylenol. Like, give me Tylenol. My chest was just so tight. You don't realize how much you use your chest muscles until you can't click a pen. You can't open your antibiotics. You can't turn the water. You can't lift your arm up. You can't move your arms at all. You can't do anything. Like, sitting up hurts because you're, like, using your chest muscles to do that. I was just in a lot of pain that lasted about 10 days. Um... You can't work out your upper body for six weeks, but you can work out your lower body two weeks later. So two weeks later, I went back to the gym. Two weeks later, I had another post-op appointment. He just looked around, told me everything was good. Um, and then six weeks later, I had my last post-op appointment. He told me I could start wearing regular underwire bras. He told me everything looked healed, everything looked great. They took after pictures. Um, that's honestly all... That was pretty much the whole process. It was... About, I think, a 10, almost a, pretty much a 10 week process from my consultation to my last post op appointment to everything healing. It takes about six weeks for your boobs to soften up and heal. I am 100% happy with my results. Um, I don't dress like this every day, but it is nice when I want to go have like a date night. I can wear a cute shirt like this and I can have cleavage and I feel good about myself and I just love the way all my bras fit me. Um, I love the way. My bikinis fit me. I just, I'm very confident naked. I, I'm just so happy with it. And I have no regrets. I wouldn't have changed a single thing I did. I did wait to tell my parents after I went through with it, which I do regret a little bit. But other than that, um,
Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I do regret, I didn't tell my parents about my surgery until about, until December that I had it done. I didn't live with them, so they didn't see it, and I was afraid of their judgment, but they ended up being supportive and loving about it all, and I regret not telling them. I was kind of hiding it from my parents because I was afraid of how they would react. I don't, re don't suggest you do that, but if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll answer it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think that's...